Well, first up now, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has inaugurated the registration process for the Kalangar Women's Entitlement Scheme today in Topur village of Tamil Nadu. Now, the residents of the area here rely on jobs in the agricultural sector and in many of the eateries there, bakeries and even tea shops that have sprung up over the years due to heavy traffic movement across salem Dharmapuri border. Now, Stalin here chose to launch the scheme from Dharmapuri district, and this is because his father and former chief minister, M. Karunanidhi, had inaugurated the women's self-help program from the district way back in 1989. Now, the DMK government, of course, has allocated 7,000 crore rupees in the budget of 23-24, and further, an additional 12,000 crore rupees will boost the scheme in the next budget session, is what the DMK maintains. Now, this is the development at this point in time that's coming to the fore as uh, Stalin here decides that he will go ahead and inaugurate the women's self-help uh, scheme. Now, from the same constituency that his father did so. Now, we, I have my colleague uh, Darni who's joining us live on the broadcast for more details. Uh, Darni, what's the latest that we're picking up on this? Uh, Deepak, this is one of the most important political, uh, you know, uh, the poll promises made by the DMK way back in 2021 and uh, uh, the opposition parties, BJP and the ADMK, they have been attacking the DMK over the delay in the implementation of this scheme and now after two years, uh, the Chief Minister has inaugurated the registration uh, for the Kalangar, uh, you know, uh, uh, Magalir Urmai Tutam. So basically, this, uh, you know, scheme is that like uh, women, uh, women housewives, the eligible housewives, they'll be getting rupees 1,000 in their banks, accounts directly from the government as part of uh, this scheme. And you know, this they'll get every month, which means uh, uh, they'll get rupees 12,000 rupees per year, you know, overall. And while, you know, launching the registration, Chief Minister M.K. Stalin told that uh, this 12,000 rupees per year will help women live with self-esteem, which is the motto of Dravidian model. And he also went on to tell that uh, not a single, you know, uh, eligible woman will be left out, uh, you know, from this scheme. So, you know, uh, this scheme is scheduled for launch on September 15th. Uh, this will officially launch on September 15th. And now uh, the registration process for the same has uh, uh, began. So, uh, you know, any any woman who is a housewife, if they feel they're eligible for this scheme, they can go on and apply in the government's website uh, to be a uh, you know beneficiary of this scheme. So definitely, uh, the GMK is fulfilling one of its major poll promises here. And this year, the government has allocated 7,000 crores, uh, you know, in their budget for the scheme. And you know, the Stalin has also went on to tell that in the next year's budget, that is uh, the 24-25 budget, uh, the amount will be increased to rupees 12,000 crores. So an additional 5,000 crores will be provided for the scheme. Uh, so definitely, a major boost for a uh, woman in Tamil Nadu and uh, the registration is currently underway and anybody who feels that they're eligible for the scheme they may apply in the government's website all right darni thank you for joining us with those details now moving on to the top story that we're going to be focusing on now that's in karnataka today it's as though the right hand here does not know what the left hand is up to and vice versa well, we're talking about a startling revelation on the part of uh, the Deputy Chief Minister, Mr. D.K. Shivkumar. He says there's a conspiracy that's being hatched to destabilize the state government and that this is happening abroad. He says it's happening in Singapore. But here's the surprising bit. This revelation comes at the backdrop of, of course, JDS leader H.D. Kumar Swami allegedly paying a visit to Singapore. It so happens here that uh, Kumar Swami flew to Singapore soon after the 10th uh, of May assembly polls as well and returned on the day of uh, counting of votes. And now adding to this, the recent bonhomi between the BJP and the JDS is also something that is really adding to the speculation. Now the last day of the assembly session saw BJP leader Mr. Baswaraj Bama and Mr. Kumar Swami holding a joint press meeting in which the two leaders pledged to fight the Congress-led state government together both inside and even outside the assembly. Now, amid all of this, while the deputy chief minister smells a conspiracy or at least is hinting at one, the chief minister says he has no clue. Listen in first to what Mr. D.K. Shivkumar said about the conspiracy and then let's listen in to what the chief minister, Mr. Sidramaya, says. So for, uh, some BJP leaders and from other uh, JDS leaders were trying to have some pact what I got the information. Mm -hmm. They wanted to, they could not uh, d d have a meeting here mm -hmm. or in Delhi. Mm -hmm. So some ticket bookings and everything was been going on there, which enemy and me becoming friends now. Mm -hmm. That is going on. Just I have a little information on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it will go, go on or may not go on. But we are in track with uh, all this type of uh, uh, political understandings. Singapore, 
ನನಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಡಿ ಕೆ ಶಿವಕುಮಾರ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಕೇಳಿ ನನಗೇನಾರ ಕೇಳೋದಿದ್ರೆ ಕೇಳಿ proportion by some section of the people. There is no question of aligning with anybody who will fight the battle independently on our own. Now we went back to Mr. D.K. Shukumar. Now asked him, well, you're claiming conspiracy, the chief minister is saying he doesn't know. What exactly is happening? Well, he says there's nothing wrong in what the chief minister says. He says this is still in a very initial state and that's why probably this remark has come in from Mr. Sidramaya. Let's listen to the latest reaction of Mr. D.K. Shivkumar. Definitely he's not aware of it. I don't want to discuss anything much till it is ripen. It was an initial stage which I wanted to come out, made it uh, public. Tickets was being... Uh, blog, book, discussion was been going on. That is why I kept uh, the public alert and my MLS also alert on this issue. Well, my colleague Neha joins us live on the broadcast. Neha, this is an interesting situation at this point in time. While, of course, Mr. D.K. Shukumar is yet to present any sort of evidence about uh, this particular claim, uh, the BJP and the JDS combined say, well, uh, these are just rumors, uh, these are just, you know, false allegations. And now you have Mr. Sidramaya who says he doesn't even know about this issue. Well, that's absolutely right, Deepak. You know, of course, we'll really have to wait to see how this pans out now because, you know, D.K. Shivakumar, of course, the Karnataka Deputy Chief Minister, they're making quite a tall claim, uh, going on to say that, you know, the BJP and the JDS are hatching a conspiracy over there to try and topple the government. Uh, sitting in Singapore is where these meetings are happening, is what he's claimed. However, of course, you know, the Chief Minister, on the other hand, says that he doesn't have any specific inputs about this. Uh, whether, of course, you know, the government now is going to be taking this up seriously, well, that's something that, you know, we'll really have to wait and watch out for. Uh, but having said that, it's also important now to mention that the BJP also has reacted to this and they've, you know, of course, gone on to rubbish all these claims and just say that, you know, uh, th this is nothing but the government, of course, feeling a bit insecure at this point. But uh, with that being said, we're also, of course, picking up now the work that a meeting has been called with all of the MLAs also, uh, you know, to try and ensure that all is well within the camp over here. And most importantly, how this pans out, of course, is something that would really be quite crucial here to see in Canada. Right, Neha. Now, let's, of course, open this up. We have a panel of guests joining us. Vijay Prasad from the BJP, Lavanya Ballal from the Congress Party, Syed Aslam from the JDS, all of them with us. Let me open this up with Lavanya. Lavanya, interesting situation here. Uh, well, uh, is it, can we really say that when you have such a big claim that's coming to the fore, you're talking about a government which is running with 135 MLAs. It's a historic mandate. You have the deputy chief minister who claims there's a conspiracy that's happening. Can we really believe that the chief minister is completely unaware of it or is he just not wanting to interfere in this issue? How do we read this? Good evening, Deepak. I was just talking to his media uh, in charge, his media secretary, and this is what the media secretary has to say. He said, I don't know about the meeting. He does not say that this agenda is not a foot. He's not saying, he's not disclaiming what the deputy CM has said. He just meant, I don't know about the meeting and please ask me about something else. That's all the CM said. He did not refute what the deputy CM has said. Let's make it very clear. No, but even then, Lavanya, he says, well, you can ask, uh, you know, this question to Mr. D.K. Shukumar. Yes, we can hear you. But, you know, when he when he makes that statement, we played out the bite of Mr. Sidramaya. We are not we are relying on anybody's statement. We are relying on the, st the bite itself that came in from Hubli earlier in the day, where uh, Mr. Sidramaya says, well, he doesn't know about this issue. He said, he says, he said, I don't want to address this issue. That's what he's trying to say there. He didn't Adu, say Adu, he's not Adu aware Adu of what he said. I don't know about it. 
He says, I don't know about this particular question you are asking. I don't want to address it. He said, I don't know about the meeting. That's all. He didn't refute and say the meeting has not happened. Okay, let's let's bring in the JDS because today we had the JDS Supremo himself come out and uh, somewhere issue clarifications. They've even said to the, you know, when it comes to the Lok Sabha elections, they're going to fight solo. They're not even going with the BJP. They're trying to tarnish the image of the JDS is the claim. Aslam, what would you like to say? Because, you know, you have the Deputy Chief Minister making this charge. It's directly aimed at the uh, JDS is what it looks like. You had the JDS Supremo himself having to come and clarify today. Well, uh, Deepak, let me, uh, you know, tell you very, very clearly. Today, the former Prime Minister, our party, National Party President, has made it very clear that we are going to fight the Lok Sabha elections independently. I hope that's loud and clear. We are going to fight the elections independently. But if anybody who's trying to tarnish the image of JDS, that certainly will not be acceptable. Now, it, it, it is very clear, Deepak, that... Uh, you know, Congress has got a, a thumping majority. I think they need to focus on the development and delivering the promises which they have, you know, committed to the, not promised, they have committed to the people of uh, Karnataka. I think, uh, you know, it, it's very clear what, that all What's is happening not in well. Singapore, the, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Aslan you know, Pasha? Tell us what's happening in Singapore Kumar because it's the Deputy Chief Minister saying that there is a conspiracy being hatched from the JDS's end along with the BJP. What's happening in Singapore? Uh, whether... Well, Deepak, whether it's a conspiracy or not, only Mr. D.K. Shivkumar can say that. But we have told uh, it, it is a personal visit which uh, um, the former Chief Minister Kumar Swami has done uh, to Singapore. But there, there's nothing for Congress to worry on that. If, if D.K. Shivkumar has got any more has got more information on this, he should come come out in public and say that. But we are uh, categorically saying that this is just to tarnish the regional party's image, and we'll absolutely not tolerate that. Okay, let's bring in the BJP as well. Interesting situation uh, for you, Mr. Prasad, because on one hand, you have the JDS, which is saying we don't want to uh, have any sort of association with the BJP when it comes to Lok Sabha elections. There's somewhere, we saw uh, that picture where Mr. Basuraj Bombay and uh, Mr. H.T. Kumar Swami sat together. But right now, as soon as this charge of uh, the Singapore Connect has come to the fore, somewhere the JDS is uh, trying to say that we are not involved in any of this. This is a personal visit. We are not even going to associate ourselves with the BJP. Uh, thanks, uh, Deepak. See, uh, these discussions uh, uh, in the first place is coming out when uh, B.K. Hari Prasad openly claimed that he knows how to make CMs and bring them down too. This is the direct attack from uh, DKS camp on Sidramaya camp. Okay. See, this, uh, uh, this statement brings out uh, the ongoing mudslinging campaign within the Congress and B.K. Hari Prasad, a disgruntled Congress leader, is successful in washing dirty linen in the public. And he has, uh, means no words, and he has already said he stands by his statement. See, there is an open, see, uh, Congress may not agree with that, but we have to uh, go around what's happening there. See, there is an open rift between uh, Sidramaya camp and DKS camp. Uh, Sidramaya has edge over uh, DKS uh, and many leaders have openly claimed that uh, Sidramaya will continue to be CM even after the 2.5 two years. Okay. It might be, a, it is a purely intra-party uh, intra uh, fighting. But if you look into the, the other uh, aspect today, the 20 uh, MLAs who have written a letter to uh, Sidramaya, PR Patil, and signed that's by... A, that's a different issue. We are taking that up uh, later. Uh, Mr. Prasad, so let's okay. stick to this so, particular topic this, as we this, discuss this. Yeah, yeah. See, How, uh, now, because... Are, see, uh, 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 H.D. Kumar Swami going to Singapore, uh, he is going for whatever personal reasons, it is up to him. Uh, but to, uh, uh, to shift the spotlight from Congress's failures, uh, deteriorating a lot of situation in, uh, in Karnataka, they are doing, uh, they are trying to play googly, they are uh, trying to bowl googly, which uh, DK Shukumar has, instead of uh, bowling a googly, he has uh, uh, bowled a dead ball. This is what I would like to say. And absolutely, absolutely, whatever the DKS is, see, people of Karnataka have given them thumping majority, 135 MLAs. They have to be so strong. Are the MLAs so vulnerable? 
it is a okay. clear case of a mud slinging activity happening within the Congress party. They have to answer it. They have they are answerable for the people of Karnataka, not us, Deepak. Okay. Okay. Okay, Mr. Prasad. Okay, now we've heard, of course, the three versions coming in from the Congress, the JDS, and uh, the, even the BJP. Uh, let's move on to another issue from Karnataka. I request all the panelists to stay with us because, you know, this is not the only uh, topic that, of course, we've been speaking about. More importantly, there's another issue that has come up. It's a case of Karnataka legislators asking, well, show me the money. And the government somewhere going, where's the money? Now, to start with, the Congress, this is much talked about five poll promises have been, you know, much of a non-starter. Now it appears to have been a case of over-promising and under-delivering for the Karnataka government. At this juncture, you have the Deputy Chief Minister, Mr. D.K. Shivkumar, who has come out and openly admitted that the state coffers are in a state of constraint. The reason, well, no prizes for guessing, the five poll promises. Further exerting pressure are demands for funds from various MLAs for developmental work that the state government at this point in time is probably is in no position of fulfilling at the moment at least. Listening to the plight of the cash-strapped Karnataka government from the Deputy Chief Minister himself. now after a purported letter of mla br patel started making the making the rounds in which uh, you know the letter claims that the ministers are not uh, releasing funds to the legislators now the MLA first came out and clarified that this letter is fake. Now, this letter, of course, dated 24th, spoke about various issues, about the funds not being received. He's also speaking about certain transfer issues as well that they're facing. But he has gone on to say that the letter is fake. Now, on the other side, of course, we just heard the chief minister says that, yes, there are requests coming in from MLAs that, you know, we need funds, but we're not able to allocate those funds at the moment. We again went back to Mr. D.K. Shukumar to ask him about this particular letter. Let's listen to what he said at that time. It is all fake news. It is a fake letter. It is a tamper letter. No MLS has written that letter. It is only a cut and paste. The MLS, I spoke to the MLS. I'm in touch with all of them. They're all the senior and responsible leaders. No MLA has signed. It is a cut and paste of some signatures which they have done it. As far as the funds, grant, transfer is concerned, it is the prerogative of the chief minister and the ministers. Everyone, it is not only we have to take care of the office because we have to look at the administration is very important. Legislators demand uh, so many postings, but there is a rules, frame, law. We have to respect it. Well, uh, Lavanya, coming back to you on this. Now, this is a catch-22 situation, really, for the Congress, because, you know, earlier in the day, we had Mr. D.K. Shivkumar say, yes, the legislators have been writing to us. They've been asking 100 to 300 crores. Where can we really bring this sort of money? Because we have the five poll promises. That's our biggest priority at the moment. At least for the next year, they'll have to, you know, have some patience. That means there is a serious concern as far as funds are concerned. Now, whether this letter is fake or real, but the issue is very much real. It exists. How are you going to really fix it? Can the people of the state, the biggest apprehension that many people had is, well, you're going to give all of this for free, but what are you going to take away? Is it going to come at the cost of infrastructure in the city of Bengaluru, in the city of Mysuru, in the city of Kalburgi, or anywhere across the state? Well, Deepak, first of all, it is very important that the letter is Lavanya? fake. And it is very important to find out who the mischief makers are. Because we have video, um, you know, press... Uh, bite of the MLA himself saying that's not my letter and that and he's giving three reasons why it is not his letter. Well, Lavanya, like I facts. said, let's not even delve into the letter. Question. Let's not delve into no, the letter. No. I am talking to you about what Mr. D.K. Shivkumar has said. It's on record. 
Well, Dikesh Kumar ji said, yes, there are financial constraints, but nowhere in his statement he says, we are going to stop all the work. He says, yes, we might delay the work. His statement clearly states there might be a little bit of delay in the work, but there will not be any program that will be stopped. The poll promises will not be stopped, neither will the infrastructure work or any other development work will not be stopped. But yes, it may get delayed a little bit. I think it is very clear right there. We are very clear about our promises to the people and we are clear that we will fulfill our poll promises and administer Karnataka well. Well, uh, but, you know, uh, Lavanya, you're still not answering my question because, you know, if you have the Deputy Chief Minister himself, and I'm going to just read out what he has said. Uh, he says that, mm -hmm. in fact, there are many MLAs who say that they've made promises to the people, but, you know, they're asking for funds, and it could range anywhere between 10 to 300 crores. He says, how can we mm -hmm. allot so much at this point in time? He says they're asking them to be patient, asking them to tour in affected areas. Now, the question here is the MLAs have a concern, that means. They do have a concern that the funds are not reaching them because if you're only going to talk about uh, free electricity, but you're not going to give a particular uh, constituency, you know, in good roads to ply on, is this something that is okay with the Congress party? And, uh, and that well, they say, hold on for a year. What are we holding on for? Because you, you have the same amount of money that you're going to spend, you know, between 2023 and 2024. And 24 to, you know, uh, 25, because or it's only going to increase your expenses on these five guarantees. It's not going to reduce. So how is it going to change the next year is my question. So Deepak, here is the thing. We just finished our budget session and now is when the funds get allocated. And if the MLAs have made a request up to 300 crores for the next one year, it takes one year for these funds to be released. And I'm sure DK sir is not saying that, you know, we are not going to release funds for next one year. He says there might be a there might be a delay. Let me make it very clear. There might be a delay in the releasing of funds, but we will not stop any kind of work. And this demand for funds is not for immediate use. It is for the next one year of developmental work in every constituency. And let me make it very clear. Budget gets allocated to every constituency after the budget session that just got over a couple of days ago. Okay, let's uh, let's see what the BJP and the JDS have to say. Let me open this up uh, to Mr. Prasad. Uh, Mr. Prasad, uh, what do you make of this? Because you have, let's not delve into the letter because, you know, the Congress and Mr. the, uh, the MLA himself has denied it. Uh, we are just going by what Mr. D.K. Shivkumar has stated. No, no, see, uh, Deepak, we need to go into the letter because this was as expected. Congress has told it is a fake letter. But let's hear to the, uh, listen to the uh, the video of bite of uh, Basavaraj. Uh, Deepak. He has openly... Deepak. He has openly Deepak. claimed that he has signed the letter. Do you think that he... Uh, oh, yeah. Love uh, a letter complete. Uh, yeah. so, no, no, no. So, so this, in this video, Masaraj Rai Reddy has told that uh, he has signed the letter. That means no, he's not no, playing no. mischief. So, this is what... See, this is the, uh, the game... This is the uh, blatant uh, lie game. Play, well, let's not, I mean, uh, Mr. Prasad, Please. you can keep the phone uh, down because we are not yeah, able yeah. to see anything there clearly. Uh, okay, okay. You so, know, we can keep okay. the phone I down. Have, like okay. I mentioned, I now, whether the letter I, is true or not, let's not yeah. delve into that because that doesn't even come into the picture because you see, have the now, Deputy Chief Minister himself yeah. who has said that MLAs are writing, they're seeking funds. We are not in a position at, the, at this point in time. They have to be patient because it's Deepak, on record. Deepak. So we don't have to really delve into the letter. Deepak. We have studied the, uh, uh, whatever the dead budget given presented by Sidramaya in detail. And we can openly say that it is a budget without any forethought. Nothing. They are concentrated only on providing the uh, guarantees and that to 60,000 crores per annum is required to fulfill the guarantees. And the Congress in the, uh, in the previous, when they were sitting in the opposition, they were jumping around uh, the Vidam Sada saying that, okay, unemployment has increased in Karnataka. There is too much of unemployment. BJP is not providing unemployment. Are Baba, where have you provided employment? What have you done to uh, for the schemes to generate employment? You have almost reduced 8 to 10,000 crores on the developmental works. You have reduced 10,000 crores on the capex investment. Where will you generate employment, sir? What happens? That means that means your intention is to 
bring in more unemployment and start giving a dose for the unemployed ones? Is it your intention? Don't you want to take Karnataka to, to the next level of development uh, trajectory? See, Karnataka has stood, uh, has stood first in almost each and every sector. Now, with this kind of budget, with the kind of, with the kind of uh, uh, debt budget, what Sidramaya has presented, who claims to have presented 13 budgets, and he has failed to think over and present a budget where uh, he will put uh, Karnataka into the next level of uh, development. He has done nil. He has done nothing. Zero. Where? What is he going to achieve with this one? Just the bold promises. And without the same, uh, when we bring in when we bring in these kind of uh, issues inside the parliament, inside the parliament, sorry, inside the assembly, they suspend BJP uh, uh, MLAs. And when we uh, bring it outside I'm the sorry, assembly, I'm sorry, BJP they MLAs say, okay, were suspended fake, for misbehavior. Lavanya, Lavanya, Lavan, would you like to respond? They, they bring in Singapore angle. He's been they going they on. They try to play Googly. No, no, Lavanya. I okay, not, Lavanya wants to come in, Mr. Prasad. Prasad. Let's. Let, you you ah. made a few points. Ah. We'll give her an opportunity to rebut, and then we'll we'll also have the JDS. Well, first of all, it is misinformation that the BJP MLAs were suspended for demanding something. They were suspended for misbehavior, for the brutish, thuggish behavior against the deputy the speaker it in the assembly. Plan. Let that be very clear. Pre -plan. Misinformation no, no, cannot go out on any platform. Plan. Also, when Mr. Prasad is Suspension talking about unemployment, sir, what has your central government done? Well, how many two crore jobs have you created in the last nine years? Zero. Deeper, Please Deeper, give us the facts Deeper. and figures Deeper. of the Burma government. Deeper. And, and the Yadurapa government about the employment the generation employment. in the state of Senator Karnataka. Senator I'm sure you do not have the facts and data as we do, sir. Please do not make random statements in a debate. Let's, 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 let's allow another speaker to uh, complete, uh, Mr. Mr. Prasad. Uh, you know, she was quite patient. Let's allow, let's let's allow uh, Lavanya to complete. You can you can you can come in again. Let's let's allow Lavanya to complete. No, my point was very simple. He does not have the facts and figures of the unemployment rate during the Yadurapa government or the Basavaraj Bombay government. He makes tall claims right now without the backing of data. Sir, we are in power just for two months. You were in power for four years, sir. What happened to the state of Karnataka? Look at the crumbling infrastructure in Karnataka, sir. What's the employment rate? What is the farmer suicide rate when BJP was in power in Karnataka? Please back your statements with data. This is my humble request. I have Thank all you. statements, Lavanya. You don't have to worry about the Okay, statements. let's bring in the JDS. Uh, Mr. Aslam has been waiting very patiently. Uh, well, Mr. Pasha, what do you make of, uh, you know, uh, Lavanya claims that, you know, in the previous regime as well, things were not very good. Uh, but uh, do you, somewhere, are you okay with right now, MLAs having to go and ask for funds and, uh, you know, the Deputy Chief Minister saying, well, you'll have to hold on for at least a year? Well, I... I'm absolutely not, Deepak. Let me tell you, in the process of fulfilling the five guarantees which the Congress government has given, I think they're ignoring the, the basic things of uh, people of Karnataka. And absolutely, when they've got a thumping majority, it will not be appreciated if they ask the people of Karnataka, Karnataka to have some basic uh, issues to be resolved. Now, uh, I just want to tell, uh, uh, Lavanya ji was asking about the stats. Let me tell you, ma'am, in the budget, in the process of fulfilling the five guarantees in the budget, I'll tell you what are the major uh, major sectors which you have ignored. The agriculture and uh, horticulture department, they've got 40% less allocation in the budget. The rural development has got 17% less allocation in the previous budget when you compare the previous budget to the current budget. And also, let me tell you, the cooperative societies, that has got 17% lesser allocation if you compare with the previous uh, government. The water resources sector, the water resources sector that has got 40% lesser allocation compared with the previous budget. This is what the stat says. We, we are very happy if the, uh, you know, if the letter is fake, we will be very happy if you allocate proper funds to your uh, MLAs. So the, the MLAs also have a responsibility to address the people of their own constituencies. We will be happy if the funds are allocated at the earliest. The basic things which are the needs of the people of uh, all the constitu uh, constituencies have to be addressed. There is no way the people have to wait because you want to deliver your five guarantees. It doesn't mean the people of Karnataka should wait for the other basic necessities. 
Absolutely not. Because, you know, your five guarantees are reaching out to a few people. Uh, there are many other people where the guarantees, many of them are not even eligible for any of the guarantees. Uh, developmental work shouldn't take a back seat. And more importantly, Lavanya, this is a very precarious situation, honestly. Because you more often than not have opposition MLAs who come out and say, well, the government is not giving us funds. Now, if you have a situation where your own MLAs have this concern, then it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, well, Deepak, I would like to say something to both the opposition parties here. So you need to do your duty and please appoint a leader of opposition first. And you that's should your do concern, your duty as well to the concern. voters who have voted Lavanya, for you to the state concern. of Karnataka. We will Lavanya, do the needful. We concern. will put our house. That you is our concern, sir. That is my why, concern. Why, why, I'm a citizen why, of Karnataka. How dare you say it is why, not my concern, sir? What rubbish are you speaking? No, no, it is why, a concern of every concern citizen concern of Karnataka. Of, 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 there is no leader of opposition. We have had one full session without a leader of opposition. How shameful is it? Foreign parties would say, oh, we say Modi's name and we will win all the elections. Excuse me? You may have won elections or lost elections. You are about the leader of opposition. You leave it to us. You leave it to us. No. It is not your concern. It is not your concern. Okay. Lavanya, you the continue to make your point. Let's let's leave out the other uh, issue here. Let, let's not let's not get into this argument about the leader of the opposition because we've uh, you know debated that multiple times. Yes, uh, you know the BJP has has failed to do it. But you know the, uh, let's stick to the point here. The point is BJP has failed. BJP has failed and BJP is ignoring the state of Karnataka because they have not got the victory they expected in the state of Karnataka. Now, Absolute. the BJP party looks at multiple ways, like Krishna Bhairi Gaurav sir was also saying today, that they're looking at multiple ways to pull down this government which has been elected rightfully by the people. And they have done this multiple times across India through their Operation Kamala. And this is what they are also planning to do is what... Uh, DK, uh, our uh, deputy CM, DK Shivakumar Ji, said today. Okay. Well, it's an interesting uh, comment, nonetheless, that has come in from Mr. D.K. Shukumar. We'll, of course, have to see how the MLAs now, the other uh, MLAs uh, who have allegedly written letters, what they will have to say. The CLP meet has been called, of course, where these issues will be discussed. And finally, there will be a consensus is what, you know, the top leaders of the Congress party are hoping. I thank all our panelists, Mr. Prasad, Mr. Apasha, and also Lavanya for joining us on this uh, broadcast. Moving on to another story that's coming in from neighboring.